the homeless have TB and everything. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, I think you're going to come up with somebody that can expose you to TB in your own congregation faster than you will the homeless. Mm -hmm. Room and Inn requires that they have TB testing mm -hmm. and everything before they come through the program. So they're actually healthy in that respect. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, if you've been on the streets very long and you haven't had good nutrition and everything, mm -hmm. and if you are an alcohol or drug user or an IV drug user, mm -hmm you're going to be exposed to everything mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not careful like they should be. Mm -hmm. So we do know that all of that is there mm -hmm. but I've never, I've been exposed to TB a couple of times and mm -hmm. I've never gotten it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes you just go on and do what you got to do mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. works out. It's mm -hmm. uh, the people that come, I, I just don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. It's not like going to work. Mm -hmm. I hate meetings that's the part of my job I really hate. Away from the people. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that connection. Mm -hmm. I, like, uh, I like being able to sit down and talk to them mm -hmm. and hear their stories and where they've come from and what they've done. Mm -hmm. And I got extremely close to one of the women that had been on the street. Mm -hmm. I had known her since she hit the streets. Mm -hmm long about the time she was 16 or 18 she mm -hmm. off and on you know she'd run away or whatever and she died about a year ago mm -hmm. and I did get very close to her and she was uh, it really tore me up and I knew her story too and mm -hmm. I knew that she had had problems with her family and everything mm -hmm. and it was very hard watching her die and so you so, so uh, in that occupation you have an opportunity to meet people over the years that you've seen them right. uh, when they mm -hmm. first came into right. the program and mm -hmm. now you've watched them and so you've also watched some people who've been able to uh, change their lives in Absolutely. a positive fashion as well Absolutely. as uh, people who... I think it's the ones that stick out in your mind often are the ones that grabbed hold and you couldn't let mm -hmm. go. But uh, I will share a personal story. Mm -hmm. I hope my brother doesn't mind. He mm -hmm. actually came through the guest house. He was homeless. He was a bad alcoholic. Mm -hmm. and. Family couldn't deal with him anymore. Family often can't deal with alcohol and drug issues. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he came to the guest house. He stayed six months, he got sober, he celebrated his fifth birthday. Mm -hmm. I, we never know who's going to walk through our mm -hmm. doors. Mm -hmm. You never know. Mm -hmm. My mother used to say she had an uncle that one day left the breakfast table and they never saw him again. Mm -hmm. They don't know why. why? They never mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. And that, whether it's mental illness or mm -hmm. what. But you know, a lot of people think that the same people are homeless. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Our statistics prove that every year, 56% of our population moves on, mm -hmm. that they are transient. Mm -hmm. That it's only that 40 something that remain. Mm -hmm. And most of it is families can put up with you so long, but they can't put up with you forever. Mm -hmm. And so so if they, they, they sort of move on through mm -hmm. and catch a train and, and right. end up somewhere else. Or they might move on to a job into their own apartment. Mm -hmm. And don't let us know that. Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of people don't look back. You mm -hmm. know, it's not something they want to be reminded of. They don't mm -hmm. want to wear a badge that I was homeless, I am mm -hmm. homeless. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately we don't see every success story, but we do know that um, we have to judge success one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And we do get lots of letters. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what if a congregation is not involved in the uh, Room in the Inn program and you would like to uh, encourage that congregation to do so? What could you say to them this morning? Well, what we'll, would they have to do? What would they have to do? Um, I would, to? They could call me at 251 mm -hmm. 7019. They could ask for anyone in the Room in the Inn mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. program. And a congregational coordinator said it once best when he said, when you ask another congregation to do room in the end, you're mm -hmm. not sharing the burden, you're sharing the blessing. Mm -hmm. It's really letting people put their faith into action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you would encourage those congregations that might not be involved in a room in the end. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Look into it. Mm -hmm. Half of our population pretty much breaks down into white and African American. Mm -hmm. And we would truly love to see more African American congregations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. participating. We want that role model, especially for some mm -hmm. of the younger mm -hmm. African American men. We have a lot of, uh, it's like I said, it's pretty much split right down the middle. I think mm -hmm. it, last year it was 47% of we're African American, American mm -hmm. and then the 44 percent were white, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's a real even split, and I would like to see that. More right. They need more. I really would. They think the, mm -hmm. you've lost a whole generation of mm -hmm. people to drugs, and mm -hmm. some of these younger people that are on the streets, they need that role model so bad, mm -hmm. and they need to be proud right. of who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that would help so mm -hmm. much. We have we have a, several African American churches that participate and literally go out of their way. Mm -hmm. They're so good and we'd mm -hmm. like to see more. More, more African really American would. and Absolutely. more minority uh, participation as yes. well mm -hmm. uh, yes. in, in whatever you're doing there. Yes. Very yes. Good. And, and those uh, who might not uh, 
uh, wish to become a part of it, uh, that they can uh, provide some kind of financial resources in order they to can. help. They can, and mm -hmm. we'd love to have them come to the campus, like mm -hmm. Rachel said. We can always use volunteers. Mm -hmm. If you want to do nothing but come in and talk to someone and decide, hey, are they really out here because they want to be, or is there a real problem? Because mm -hmm. some people think people are there. We've got 30 seconds, okay. uh, Mr. Moss, and over the last few seconds, say something about uh, Father Strobel. Uh, the, uh, about him and, and this program. Well, Father Strobel is the dreamer. He's the one that has truly brought it all together. He is still very much of a leader. Mm -hmm. He's the example to the whole, uh, to all of the congregations. Mm -hmm. He has a charisma about him. He has a deep love for the homeless mm -hmm. that I think most people will never understand. Very good. And, and, and let me thank the two of you. Uh, thank you. I'm a sister, oh, Mr. Moss, for coming by and giving us some excellent information. Mm -hmm. And let me encourage our, our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.